and happy Sabbath to you all. We thank God for the message that we have received from our elder. And uh, now we are going into another segment, as our sister said. Uh, our chapter is going to be Nicodemus. Uh, that is chapter 17 in Desires of Ages. I don't know which edition you have, uh, but uh, yes, we're in chapter 17. Unfortunately, I cannot project. And I'm going to ask our sister, Sister Kezia, to be able to do that for us. But before, we're going to have, we're going to sing Sweet By and By. Uh, before we sing, let us pray. And that song is 428 in a hymnal, SDA hymnal, 428. It is sweet by and by. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. We are so thankful and grateful for the prayers and for the messages that you have given us this morning. Indeed, we've been fully blessed. Uh, but Father, we come also, we acknowledge we are frail. We need the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, of knowledge, of counsel uh, that we are soliciting for this morning, even as we progress, even as we read the desires of ages, Christ himself. Uh, we are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be with us. And Lord, let there be lessons for us. Um, we've got, you brought us from afar and even to a time to study this chapter about Nicodemus. Uh, we are praying, Father, that, uh, Lord, we may not leave this place empty, uh, but to know that you've been with us and to know that even as you're with us, you will guide us to all truth. And we know it's only your truth that will set us free from the deceptions of the enemy. So give us tentative hearts, and I pray that you may lead us. Father, hide me behind the cross, that nothing may come from me other than from the throne of grace. And all those who will be sharing, grant us that what we have asked of you, thanking you for Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, can, yes. I, can I have the call sharing rights on Kezia's laptop, I think, yeah. Um, I've put it on, um, uh, is it my tanga? I've put you as the host now. Kesia. Um, yeah, this one, which is Kesia, yeah. That's right. Thank you. I'll try and show you. Uh, thank you, C. So uh, we're going to sing him as you continue. Him four to eight, sweet, sweet by and by. There are three stanzas. And uh, who'd want to sing, please? Sweet by and by, 428. Who'd want to sing the three stanzas? I'm not sure of it, um, sister, but I'll sing number two if um, someone sings number one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Adin. Okay, I'll sing number one. Thank you, Sister Martha. Number three. I can do number three. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Sister Martha. Okay. <clears throat> There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. 
For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Konale Pambili Sobutene Zreni Elishem Konale Pambili we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious song of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love. And the blessing that hell all days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Amen. 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 And let us that be our prayer as we wait uh, indeed for that blessed day. Um, we, thank, we, thank, we thank God for all those who have uh, sang, have sang it to us and those who are singing in the background. So we are going to go in our study. We are in chapter 17, uh, Desires of Ages. Um, Nicodemus and this chapter is based on John chapter 3 verse 1 to 17 John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 17 uh, thank you sister Kezia for that projection so but to understand it better we're gonna open our Bibles and read those verses John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, so that it may give us a guideline. But uh, before we do, let us pray. Father, you've told us to pray unceasingly. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. We are praying, Father Lord, that the Spirit of the living God, as we read these truths, we pray, Father Lord, that you impress them in our heart so that they may lead us into the path of righteousness for your name's sake in jesus name amen amen so could we have someone who's going to read it for us please john chapter 3 from verse 1 to 17 before we do our reading john chapter 3 1 to 17 says there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, he must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, 
and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we, we, speak that we do know, and testify that we have sinned, and he received not our witnesses. If I have told you earthly things, and he believe not, how shall he believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the, that the world through him might be saved. May the Lord add a blessing upon his word. Amen. And amen. Amen. So we have read those verses. Now we're going to see how this comes into um, uh, uh, um, a lesson uh, for us. Let us read. I'm going to do the reading, the first paragraph. It says, Nicodemus held a high position of trust in the Jewish nation. He was highly educated and possessed talents of no ordinary character. And he was an honored member of the National Council. With others, he had been stirred by the teaching of Jesus. Though rich, learned, and honored, he had been strangely attracted by the humble Nazareth. The lessons that had fallen from the Savior's lips had greatly impressed him, and he desired to learn more of these wonderful truths. I want to pause. Are there any comments about this wonderful man, Nicodemus? Any comments? Yes, we have Sister Jennifer. Over to you, Sister Jennifer. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you all. So what comes to mind is that he must have had a humble spirit, even though in spite of his um, training, education, his learning, he, he was able to recognise something about what Christ was saying, what Jesus was saying. But he knew that he that he needed to understand and and i i'm yeah i i just see that that people in general who are who are highly qualified highly educated have great mm -hmm. egos and their egos prevent them from recognizing seeing in others things truths that they need to understand and uh, so i feel that this Nicodemus must have had a humble spirit. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for sharing that. Yes, he had a humble spirit. He had a humble spirit. Um, sister Erlin, over to you. Yes, good morning. Um, you know, there's people in this world that um, don't know the word, but as soon as someone starts speaking, there's a feeling, there's a, there's a stirring in their, their, in their heart for, for what's been said. And it's Nicodemus had that feel, that stirring in his heart because he heard 
the teaching of Jesus. No matter how much we think that, you know, we are educated and um, and learned, yeah, there's always something to be learned. There's always something new. There's always more something that you can, that we can learn. And especially the word of God. The word of God is sharper than it, and it's sweet in the mouth. Yes, yeah, sweet in the mouth. So, yes, Nicodemus um, heard something, just like how um, Saul, when he heard Stephen speaking, something stirred inside of him why he, he became who he was because of what he heard. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, <clears throat> yes, we have Sister Dorothy and Sister Judith. Sister Dorothy first. Yes, your comments, please. Yeah, thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you, Sister Hope. Wonderful. Uh, these, um, these words of life, they are not our words. They are Christ's words. He says that... Uh, Scripture tells us that the word of God is a double-edged sword and it cuts. Therefore, when Christ spoke, even though uh, Nicodemus was a, was a, a man of, you know, of great education, there is, no, there is no limit. The word of God has its power to convict even the rich. And if we humble ourselves and speak the words to whoever we come in contact with, with humility, and use the scripture rather than our own words, what Jesus said, and ask God for wisdom as to how to present the gospel to, uh, to the rich, they need a savior too. And the, the word itself will do its work. Christ will bring the gospel home to the hearts of even the rich, like Nicodemus. It just says there, he had been strangely attracted by the humble Nazarene. So humility, can you imagine the contrast between Nicodemus and Jesus? It was a great contrast, but Jesus in himself, for who he was, his character, his meekness, in impressed the heart of Nicodemus and he was drawn to Jesus's wonderful truths, wonderful words of life, which we should uh, carry on our lips. We should never witness to people without quoting scripture because it's the, his words that cut to the marrow. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Dorothy, for your comments. Yes, the word cuts. It does prick, and uh, we, sh we should be equipped. And in doing so, we have to take time to study. Over to you, Sister Judy. Thank you, Sister Dorothy and all. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good yeah, Sabbath. just to add on that, you know, Nicodemus was highly educated and, you know, possessed so many talents. It says, possessed talents of no ordinary character, but still he saw, he saw his need, his great need, when he heard the, the, the words from the Savior's lips. You know, it says the Savior's lips had greatly impressed him and he desired to learn more of these wonderful truths. The Spirit of God was just working in his heart. But sometimes I wonder, it's just a question, um, I wonder why for some people the word of God can be so powerful and like a two-edged sword for them. They're quite responsive to it. And for others, I just wonder for others, they, they, they harden their hearts. They just don't want to hear the word of God. I mean, I know God is not a God of favoritism. But sometimes you just cannot, um, I mean, it's something which always surprises me that for some people, you know, when they hear the word of God, 
they will just accept it. And for some, you know, they, they just don't want to know. It's very strange. And I know it's the Holy Spirit who, who impresses us, who convicts of us, of our sins, and draws us closer to, to God. So I don't know, this, this is just a question I'm asking if anyone is able to, to answer. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Judy. Um, uh, perhaps, I don't know if I'll answer it, but God is a merciful God. He never leaves anyone in darkness. As you said, this is a great controversy. I'm sure the way God has led you it's not the way God has led me because we are all at a different level of understanding. And indeed, there'll be even those who had in their hearts because of the great controversy. So it still comes back to choice. It still comes back to choice. Now, in relation to Nicodemus, what I'm also picking is that he was a member of the Pharisees. He was a member of the church, leaders of the church. He was a ruler of the Jews. And remember that when we go back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we've been learning, these were people in the church, leaders in the church, but still were lost in the church. Our leaders can have positions. Our leaders can have uh, the riches. They can be learned. And they're honored in the church. But still, they can be lost. And we thank God. Because Nicodemus, being the ruler of the Jewish nation, in other words, part of the congregation of, when you say rulers, we're talking about the elders. You know, so many times we talk about rulers in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and it also refers to the elders in the church who are highly educated. So we can also learn that Nicodemus, as much as he was an old, he had an ordinary character, as it was saying, but the spirit was working on him. Because why? He says that he had been stirred by the teachings of Jesus. So he knew the word. He knew the teaching but could not even identify the Messiah. But with a spirit of humbleness, looking at Christ, learning the lessons that had fallen from his lips, it just impressed him to even be able to want to learn more. So we can see that... Uh, even today, uh, because I, uh, we, we should personally bring it back into our church, our church, and also so much of our church, but also lessons for us to take outside. Can we have all the spirit of prophecies, all the lessons that we are learning daily and still be lost? That can happen. I don't know what you're thinking of, but in relation to Sister Judith's question is that so, sometimes among, among all the Pharisees, why Nicodemus? Why? Because that means that others were stiff-necked. They saw the things that Christ did, right? But they were still, uh, 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 they were still withdrawn. They could not understand the Messiah. 
because they were full of themselves. Pride that takes on. So it was a spirit of humility. Even in our walks of life, sometimes we listen to these messages. It does not click at that time. But in God's providence, some of us have come from afar, right? We, I, I, I as, as a testimony that when I used to hear of the spirit of prophecy, I never understood. I got into the church. I would hear people talking about the beast. I never understood. And with time and with the spirit of, of desiring to know, God al allowed the little that I have to be able to learn it and also to share it. But there are people who will be, be stiff-necked. They will not, even though they know it, they might not even share it. And they may also keep it to themselves and they might not even desire to, to, to make that choice themselves that the spirit of living God to work upon them. They are there like Judas. Judas walked with Christ and uh, that the other disciples did, but he chose not to. So it also comes to choice. I don't know whether I've answered it, but let us, uh, we have two hands there. Uh, um, Elder, Elder Mafeki is going to um, yes. your opinions. It, it is a very, it's, it is a very um, important question that my sister is asking because this is exactly what happened to the Jews, to the Hebrew, to the Israelites when they were in Egypt, as we were studying this morning, just a few minutes ago. They had the gospel. But because of how difficult their circumstances were, the suffering they were going through, they could not believe that such a simple message would take them out of the situation they are in. So sometimes people refuse to accept the gospel, not because they don't want but because of the suffering they are going through. The gospel brings, the, the gospel message in its simplicity. In comparison to the suffering you are going through, somebody would say, no, I cannot accept that. For instance, look at, look at um, I'll give you an example. Look at the health message. And look at the remedies that the health message gives. Then ask somebody who is suffering and in hospital to tell them to say, look, uh, there is another way you could do it, but this is the way you do it. This is what the Bible teaches and this is how you can do it. In that moment, it might be very difficult for that person to accept. However, if that person now is left with no other option other than to accept the gospel message, other than just what the gospel message is, they will accept it. Because they, their back is on the wall. They, they, there is no other option. Others will not accept it because they are living, their life is moving as they as they like it. They've got, they've got their house, houses, they've got their jobs, they've got their cars, they've got their children, they've got their grandchildren, they've got the money. Why would you need God in such a situation? You have worked, you have developed yourself, you've been to school, you've done everything. There isn't any need really for God. This is why you find in, in the West, in the West, God or, or the gospel message is not readily accepted. Why? Because we have, we, we, we have it all. We have everything we need. Why would we need God? It's only when God now withdraws his hand that's when suddenly in us, in every one of us, we suddenly recognize there is a God. That's why you find when Israel was about to enter the promised land, God told them, when you have built the houses, when you are rich, when you are wealthy, don't forget that it was me who gave you the strength to get the wealth. Well, that part we have forgotten in the West, especially in the West, because we have become so prosperous. We are now beginning to think like Nebuchadnezzar. Look at all these things that I have built by my own strength. Those, I, I think, are some of the reasons why. Good living, having abundance of everything, and also suffering. Suffering to such a point that 
the simplicity of the gospel message in itself becomes almost like a hindrance for you to believe because everything else that you know, everything else that you are hearing is telling you, you need to move this way. And you've got examples and examples of people who are saying, I did it this way, I did it this way. And yet the gospel tells you, you need to turn right. And you find salvation, you find hope, you find encouragement. It is that. It is only when our back is against the wall and there is no other option when people accept. Look at what happened during the bombings. Uh, I think it was July 7th, the bombings in Spain and in London. How the churches suddenly became full. Why? Because man recognized he's got a limited time to live on this earth. And there is a God. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Thank you for your comments. And we have uh, Sister Kezia and Sister Dorothy in that order, please. Over to you, Sister Kezia. Uh, thank you, Sister Hope, and happy Sabbath to everyone. Yes, um, just uh, the question which Sister Judith has posed there. I'd like us to go back to the Bible and see what um, Paul is saying about that, because God never forces us. We still, as you, as Sister Hope has already said, it's still a choice. And everyone is given that opportunity. And um, just like um, the governor, when he, he was, Paul was preaching to him, he said, you almost, you, you, I, I'm, you almost convinced me. He had a choice to make there. Um, let us go to Romans 1, verse 18 to 21. I will read. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are seen, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the Bible is clearly saying that everybody can see that there is God and invisible things which are clearly seen, all the things the that internal power in the God yet that no one has got the, an excuse, right? Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but because vain in their imaginations, their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I just wanted to ask to note there, their foolish heart was darkened. Therefore, when we reject the word of God, we continuously reject the word of God. We are given the example of the prophet of God. Initially, he had accepted the word of God, but then he rejected the, the warnings and the teachings of God, Balaam. And he went ahead against God. That means that his heart had been darkened. He, he was looking at himself. Selfishness. You go out uh, and distribute books and you meet people who say, look, I don't want your book. My life is in order as it is. His elder was saying, I don't need to know anything. I know everything. I met one last week, a nice gentleman, nicely dressed and everything. He said he's 72 years old. His life is perfect, is it? He, 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 he does not believe in God. He's got his pension. He's got his life. He's got, you know, his life is in order. He does not need God. The choice has been given to him, but he has darkened, you know, the, his heart is his has been darkened because he thinks that he does not need anything. But here we are told Nicodemus, 
he saw his need. He had a humble heart. He saw his need that there must be something beyond what I have. I've got a comfortable life. But God did not just put me on this earth to have a comfortable life and live like that. There must be something. What happens to me after that? What is it that, why am I here in this world? What is God expecting out, out of me? What, you know, looking around, God, the evidence of God is there. So it is for us to, to accept what God is saying to us or we can be stiff-necked and not accept what God, and then our hearts becomes hard. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kezia. Over to you, Sister Dorothy. Thank you, Sister Hope. Thank you for that explanation to those who have spoken before me. You know, they as everyone was speaking there, it just boils down to to um to unbelief and and also the scriptures. There's so many scriptures about unbelief and people who reject the gospel, people who uh, God has done everything to them to prove that he is God and he's drawing them to him. But they shut their ears to the gospel, which would have saved them. Uh, I like the scripture, which is as Kezia there read. And there are so many. Thank you for asking that question, uh, Sister Sister uh, Judith, because I sometimes wonder when I am speaking to people, I'm standing there and people are passing. And then some will stop and some will not stop. Some will take the book, some will curse me. They will give me such hateful look. But scripture has got answer for that because they love darkness. You see, especially the... um. The, the 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 gay people and all of those type of people, the look that they give us in the streets so is quite clear that because they do not want their deeds, evil deeds, to be exposed. So in their hearts, they have already purpose in their hearts. They don't want that God that restricts them and and expects them to obey Him. So for that reason, the hardness of their hearts shuts them out of heaven, out of the gospel. They will not let you even one little window for you to speak to them. You can see they hate God and his law. It is so open, uh, so clear. I like the scripture which says here, which says in, in John 3, 19 to 21, and this is the condemnation that light is come unto the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. So these people who reject the gospel, they, 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 they are in darkness. Even though they... They don't want to open a door that would cause them to turn from their evil ways. And I like also the scripture where um, in, in 1 Corinthians 18, 25, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So these people, they profess to be wise. They reject the gospel. Every, every evidence of the existence of God, they, they reject it. And they laugh, they mock. That's why they mock. So we shouldn't worry when we are speaking to people about God because them, how can God die? How can God die on the cross? But they don't allow God to show them why he died. They don't allow the light to penetrate through their hearts. They shut the light out. It's very big question, Sister Judith. I don't think we can even, um, 
we have even touched a little bit of it. And yeah, it's something to maybe search the scriptures more and understand. Yeah, thank you for that. Even you have caused me to go to the Bible and get more understanding and learning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. 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 We thank God for the uh, for those comments. Indeed, we will never know, but we know one thing for sure, as uh, indeed has been given to our scriptures. And it's wonderful to bring the scriptures. That's the beauty, so that we can not say our own, but God has fulfilled it in the word of God, in his word, so that we are not tossed here and there, but be grounded indeed in this truth. So even with Nicodemus, among all the Pharisees, he made that choice, right? He made that choice. And we thank God uh, because even in our daily walk of life, there are choices that we have to make. As our elder was saying, sometimes we are so hard pressed when things are not going well. Sometimes those particular things that we are suffering, they bring us even closer to God, wanting to know God through the suffering. And sometimes we can go through the sufferings and they draw us out from the presence of God. So, yes. Um, I perhaps we can still continue unless there are any other comments. Uh, if not, uh, if there are no any other comments, please help me if I cannot see your hands because I'm switching. I have only one gadget. Um, yes. So let us see then what what is happening in the next paragraph with the with Nicodemus. With Nicodemus would want to read unto us, please, the next paragraph. Christ's exercise of authority. Christ's exercise of authority in the cleansing of the temple had roused the determined hatred of the priests and rulers. They feared the power of the stranger. Such boldness on the part of an obscure Galilean was not to be tolerated. They were bent on putting an end to his work, but not all were agreed in this purpose. There were some that feared to oppose one who was so evidently moved upon by the Spirit of God. They remembered how prophets had been slain for rebuking the sins of the leaders in Israel. They knew that the bondage um, of the Jews to a heathen nation was the result of their stubbornness in rejecting reproofs from God. They feared that in plotting against Jesus, the priests and rulers were following in the steps of their fathers and would bring fresh calamities upon the nation. Nicodemus shared these feelings in a council of the Sanhedrin when the course to be pursued towards Jesus was considered. Nicodemus advised caution and moderation. He urged that if Jesus was really invested with authority from God, it would be perilous to reject his warnings. The priest dared not disregard this counsel, and for the time they took no open measures upon the Savior. Sorry, the priest dared not disregard this counsel, and for the time they took no open measures against the Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Judith, for that reading. Right. There are, there are lessons in there. Any comments? Right. Uh, if there are no comments, let us go back to that uh, chapter. Christ's exercise of authority in cleansing of the temple had aroused the determined hatred the priests hatred of the priests and rulers. So this, were, this was a church. 
and the priests and the rulers could not come to terms with the work that the Messiah, Christ himself in the midst was doing. I wonder what was behind that. It must have been pride, isn't it? Because pride, the pride, the, the pride they had to a next step of putting his work to an end, putting Christ's work to an end, it shows it is a lesson for us as well. That as much as there are priests, as much as there are rulers who are in the church, they had seen the work of Christ. They have seen the, man, the manifestation of his word, but still the enemy of souls was still keeping them in bondage. Was keeping them in bondage. They knew all the prof the prophecies. They knew the, the the prophetic messages behind, but something there that spirit of darkness that was in their hearts. However, still it goes back. Nicodemus comes out among the fold and brings a warning and to these people to be very careful on what their, their desires to terminate the message, to, to, to kill Jesus. It's amazing because even when we have to bring it to today, we're gonna have those messages that will cut to the core and many, of our leaders may not want to listen to those messages. And particularly when we are holding on to the present truth that is there to help the people to see, to show us our ways, our condition, the state we're in as a church who should be holding these messages and giving them to others, our lives to be vindicated that, yes, we have met the Messiah. Christ is with us. He's given us the word to take it out, but also the word to be preached in the church. There will be those who will be silenced. So that should not, as we look at Nicodemus, Nicodemus stood giving a warning God is going to have his people in this church who will stand and who will give the warnings if truly and freely in the spirit of humility, Christ's work is not going to be stopped. That is one thing. It will not be stopped by those people that are in the church, but we as a people, we should be watchful and prayerful and do the work that God has given us to do. Many of us, even when we have the great controversies, no one wants to join us to go and distribute. Right? When there's work to be done in the fields. I know I was approached at one time and say, we can give you money. This is not the work of the mission that God has given us. No. Our work is to go and do what God has given us, the message. The gospel is Christ himself to take Christ in our work that people may be, may, that Christ may be vindicated in us, but not to fear of what is within But there will be opposition. May God help us. Yes, Elder. Elder, over to you, Elder. I think also, just to add on, one of the problems here is twofold. First, the priests were making money out of the people coming to the church. 
So by Christ coming to cleanse the temple, he's depriving them of their income. They, they, see, it, they see this action as a threat to their income stream. So they, they wouldn't really be very happy with Christ doing this. You know, you, you, can, you can imagine if, if you are, because remember, the influence they had on the people. Remember that mother was asked by uh, the Pharisees, is this your son who was healed, was blind? Is this your son? He said, yes. How come you see? They said, we don't know. If you read the Bible in John chapter 9, it says they did this because they did not want to be put out of the synagogue. These leaders, these Pharisees, these, these priests and rulers had so much influence on the people that even a mother whose son had been born blind and was healed by Jesus could not admit publicly that Jesus had healed his son. That was how much power they had. So by Christ doing cleansing the temple, he is demonstrating to the people that they don't have to have as much influence on you as you think. So when we hear the present truth saints, look at the fight that comes in churches when it comes to present truth. Look at the messages that are preached from the pulpits. When you somebody stands up and says, this is what God wants us to do. Look at the opposition that comes. We're now at a point where even the spirit of prophecy itself in some churches, they don't even want to read it. And the people comply. The people follow. Why? Because they recognize if we don't follow what we are being told about the spirit of prophecy, not to read it, not to follow it, not to, not to try and you know study it, we will be put out of the church. So they stay quiet and they just fall. The other thing is also they recognize they recognize that if this was to continue how would they be able to control because through that influence they could control the people. You remember that they were asking have any of our rulers believed on him? Even to believe, they were looking to the rulers to give the signal, believe it. Aren't we in the same position, saints? Are we not in the same position? We have scholars who contradict the spirit of prophecy clearly, and we still say, Amen. When we can clearly see this is contrary to the spirit of prophecy. So we need people, saints, who can cleanse the temple. Not the temple, physical structure, even the temple of our own souls. We need them cleansed. And the cleanser will be the present truth. This is why the people were angry, the priests and the rulers were angry, because they knew they would lose influence with the people. May God help us to read and accept and understand and follow and obey. What we read for ourselves in the scriptures and what the spirit of prophecy says about what we are reading in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder, for your comments. Um, we're going to stop there. It's gone past seven o'clock. Um, indeed, we have to... Uh, um, acknowledge that it, you know it brings so much it's a story about Joseph I, I, I want to stop here anyway it's it's, uh, it's the same way he was you know in his family he stood by the present truth that he was given and uh, indeed we know the dreams he had and the journey he took uh, with his brethren. Let us stop there and we shall conclude tomorrow as we see how history is only repeating itself. We take it back to Nicodemus' time. Let us take it also back in Joseph's time. And it says there also how the prophets, indeed in those times, the Jeremiah's and the Isaiah's also went through 
such a very testing time. But God had his people still who would stand and not be moved by the priests and, uh, and the rulers and also those false prophets. So may God help us, as you said, uh, Elder, that we may learn that indeed so many times in in um, seeing the things that are happening and how people are following these, our leaders, and how uh, in following our leaders, many end up falling in the ditch. Right now, we need to follow Christ. Christ is helping us that no matter what is happening in our church with our leaders, we have our chief shepherd and our shepherd and the bishop of the church will lead his flock and will have his people. Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly father, we are so thankful for the experience of Nicodemus and you're going to have the Nicodemuses in the church. Father, as we come, Help us because the experience of Nicodemus is also an experience for each one of us. You're cleansing your church, but you're also cleansing. We have to have a cleansing of our own body temple. As indeed, you're also cleansing, waiting to cleanse in the most holy place to remove the sins and put them on the scapegoat. That time is now. As we look into our lives and examine our lives, as we examine the life of Nicodemus, we are praying that there may be lessons for each one of us as we continue to learn. We pray, Father, that we are not just hearing and learning these things and not coming to the truth. We are praying for the Holy Spirit to fall daily, fall upon us so that we may adhere to these truths you've given us. There's something better you prepared for us, Lord Almighty. And it's not the things that we see. The things we see are only temporal. But the things that are, are not seen, that are eternal. Help us that we may, our hearts and minds may be focused, heaven bound. And the work that you've given us to prepare us and to prepare others for your kingdom that is about to come. Grant us a wonderful day. We're so thankful for the Sabbath. We pray that, Lord, and all those that will be going to church and those who will be frail and listening to the messages, may these messages, Father Lord, that come from the throne of grace have an impact in our lives. We're praying for all the preachers and those who will lead. Please, Lord, may they indeed hide behind the cross. You lead them, Father Lord because we are in a, very ter in a very testing time. Grant us your love and mercy as we will walk uh, 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 by the Spirit, and the same Spirit may lead us to work together and love one another, despite of the challenges we have, but to love you, Lord, above all things. This we are praying, thanking you for your leading and for your guiding. Grant us your goodness and your mercies. May they also follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, brethren. I'm going to hand you over to, I think, Elder Turner. Or, or, or Sister Rhoda, any comments? Uh, thank you very much, Sister Hope, for that lesson study. Um, I don't know if there's any other um, any other announcements, just except that there's um, the... I don't know if there's any Sabbath school, because today is Sabbath, or if there's any... Aldam Feki, do you know anything? Is he still there? No, he's dropped off. All right, okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Sister Kezia, if you know anything. Uh, sorry, well, but I'm sure the Sabbath school will continue as, as usual. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. or maybe they let me send a message to Sorry, you. they normally they normally um log on to elder McVeckie's um Sabbath school if there's anything that's happening other than that there's nothing until um 7 p.m mm -hmm. okay I will send a message to Elder Mpeki to say people will be logging on for your Sabbath school as, as usual. All right. Okay. Thank you, Sister Kezia. And then there's just the 12 midnight prayer. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> 12 afternoon prayer. And then again at half past six in the, um, in the evening. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a blessed after, um, Sabbath, everyone. Thank you. Amen. Can the, the recording can be stopped, please.